go across the dictionary corner. Adam, what have you got for us? Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, I was on the internet the other day. I don't know if you've been <laughs> there. It's a game changer. And uh, I came across some uh, old clips of Countdown. It was embarrassing, but uh, I lost control. And, um, <laughs> I uh, was enjoying particularly the ones of the numbers rounds, and I enjoy reading some of the comments, the reactions of the YouTubers underneath those clips. I thought I would share some of those with Terrific. you in uh, what I like to call Commentary Corner. <laughs> so, yeah, I did a logo there. I was a bit upset about the why. <laughs> <laughs> fitting properly, but there it is. <laughs> and uh, so this is a, a cross-section of genuine comments from the um, internet users, beginning with one from Retro Lenzel 64, the 64th of the very noble Retro Lenzel family. <laughs> uh, and, uh, he says he's absolutely amazed at the skills of one of the um, contestants, the mathematical skills, and he says, I just went through how he managed to calculate it, and I'm stunned at how he managed to calculate it. <laughs> Beggar's belief. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, <laughs> his level of amazement is as large as the belief of a beggar. <laughs> That's an incredibly strong belief that beggars have because of the uh, special brew which increases credulity. <laughs> Well, here is a, a comment from Vicmel30. He's been watching a countdown numbers clip wherein the contestant chooses four big numbers, right? Oh. Uh, Vicmel is not impressed and says, only wankers <laughs> do four big numbers. <laughs> It's a fun name. <laughs> and, um, he is one of many people who I was surprised to find that people leave comments not just about the gameplay, but sometimes about the, the uh, beautiful countdown letter ladies, the statisticians, um, <laughs> about Rachel and Carol Vorderman as well. Uh, Paul Borbag <laughs> has, <laughs> has a comment uh, directed at Carol Vorderman. And this is a, a clip that he was watching where Carol is chuckling with amazement at the skills of one of the contestants, chuckling away there. Uh, and uh, Paul, it's too much for Paul Ball back. <laughs> he says to Carol, do your job and stop laughing at two. <laughs> and here is one of the many, many comments directed at you, Rachel. Uh, <laughs> this is a nice comment from Turtle Jesus. <laughs> I'm assuming, I'm assuming that is the answer to the question, what is the slowest kind of jizz? Turtle jizzes. Says about you, Rachel, I would drag my balls through 10 miles of broken glass just to hear how far through a walk it can. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Buxton. <laughs> OK, time to go across once more to Dictionary Corner. Adam, what have you got for us this time? Hello, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> now, I love words. And one of the things I love words is that you can use them to make amusing signs. I love amusing <laughs> signs. And I wanted to uh, share with you one that I saw when I went on a caravanning holiday with my family recently. Uh, we spent a couple of weeks in a, a lovely photographic studio. And, uh, <laughs> I, saw, I saw this sign which uh, tickled me, which said, Don't come a knocking if the caravan's <laughs> rocking. <laughs> then we all know what that means. Uh, it's pretty amusing stuff, and uh, I thought that would be good. We should get a sign like that. But we have children, so if we were ever to get to that stage, um, then most likely the caravan wouldn't actually be rocking. So I thought I should <laughs> customise the sign a little bit, come up with something uh, slightly different. And these are a few ideas that I had for the sign. Uh, first of all, I went with, don't start banging if you can hear banging. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, thought, I thought that was a little bit coarse. 
and um, maybe overstating things a little bit. So uh, my next attempt was, uh, don't attempt to negotiate <laughs> access <laughs> while I am. <laughs> <laughs> But then I thought, no, nah, you're losing something of the, the poetry of the original, don't come a-knocking if the caravan's rocking. So I went for another rhyming option and had, if you can detect vibrations, we may be having relations. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, um, I thought I'd go for something a little more uh, straightforward. If you knock and no one answers, we're having sexual intercourse. <laughs> Okay, time to go across to Dictionary Corner. Adam, what have you got for us? Uh, well, Jimmy, um, I'm always impressed when I do watch Countdown with the focus of the people playing these games, how they manage to concentrate and come up with amazing answers. I always think if I was in that position as a contestant, I would find it very difficult, mainly because, like, the inside of my head is like a kind of South London pirate radio station. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Woman, give me some letter. No, not that one. Give me one better. X and Q, them so foul. Stop with the consonant. Give me some vowel. Come on, Ray. Do a nice word. Don't make me look like a big, thick turd. Something long. Force this grace. If they get nine, it's in my face. Numbers round. Nasty shock. I can't do the math with a musical clock. Time's running out. I'm looking like a clown. I'm on a countdown. Break down. Uh, I'm going to take a trip to Commentary Corner, uh, in which I read out a few genuine internet comments that I've come across on my travels. Got that stray Y there, which is a shame. Or oh, you could think about it as like a Spanish section, though. Comentar y corner. <laughs> Today I'm going to uh, relate to you some comments that I've come across about printing. Now, I think that we can all agree that the invention of the printing press in the mid-1400s by Johann Gutenberg was probably one of the second millennium's biggest disappointments uh, <laughs> on account of, like, all it could print was, like, words and pictures and shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but now, luckily, we've got 3D printing, and that's changed the whole ball game radically, and minds across the world are boggling with the implications of a technology which potentially enables you to create any actual three-dimensional object. Uh, as you will see when I read out some of these genuine comments, which I found beneath some YouTube videos. So let's begin with a thought-provoking one from Joel Tanko, who says, the 3D printer has changed the world. Mm. <laughs> and the world would be better than worst in the world. <laughs> Just take some time to think about that. <laughs> That's enough time. <laughs> uh, let's move on to a comment now from Chewbacca Whacker. <laughs> He is your go-to guy if you need your Wookiee assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> and he has this to say. He's one of a number of people that thinks <laughs> that this would be a great application for the 3D printer. I'm going to print a printer <laughs> and then return that printer and get my money. <laughs> In your face, 3D printing manufacturers, you bunch of dicks. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> Kevin Kukar, I'm not sure if that's a gas or an electric Kukar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he asks uh, this very important question, which a lot of people are asking online when it comes to 3D printing. Can this print out Hammonds? <laughs> That's, that's the big question, isn't it? Can, can this 3D printing technology enable you to actually print out a, a, a Hammond Bemming? <laughs> and uh, if so, what, what kind of Hammond would you print? Um, well, Razug the 94th, 94th of the noble Razug clan, uh, has this suggestion. Can I print a whore? <laughs> Exactly the right voice. Yeah. 
I mean, I suppose the answer, though, is yes, you could, but what would be the point? You'd still have to pay them. Why not just visit a, an actual humming whore? Um, <laughs> But uh, Massif Oswald thinks even that would be a waste of money because he has this very specific idea. Print my cock! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's using his cock to type? Because so the font is going to capitals, then back to... He's alternating. Uppercase. He's alternating between his hand and his cock to yeah. actually do... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Buxton!